Welcome back everyone, Ubik videos again for yet another tutorial. Today we're going to cover how to do the initial wallet import after you've downloaded and installed Fusion. So the first video was just the installation, real quick and simple. And the next thing we'll get into is importing your wallet file. So after you finish the install, you should have a Fusion icon on your wallet, just or on your desktop, just like this. So go ahead and double click that and it'll pop up a window. Uh, it may take a little bit on the first time that you run this, depending on your internet connection speed, because what Fusion actually does is uh, it downloads an instance of Gubic if it doesn't find one. So if you don't already have Gubic running, uh, it will download that Gubic installer or the Gubic binary, which uh, I forget the exact size, but it's something like 40 megabytes, I think. Um, and so depending on your internet connection, it could take a little bit longer than you just saw there. So now what you want to do is uh, if you want to test something, uh, you click on use test network. But I would suggest since you're probably going to be importing your actual real wallet that you go ahead and click on use the main network. That way you don't inadvertently send some of your real funds on the test network. So just be careful about that. So go ahead and click on use the main network. Uh, it will ask you to set up a new account. You can do that if you want to, uh, but if you don't want to, you can go ahead and click launch application to get through this. Uh, I'll go ahead and create a new one so you can see the process. Hit next. It'll take it just a moment. And now we've got a new one or a new wallet here. So it, there's like some different stuff that you can kind of keep an eye on. Uh, this will be more important uh, after it takes longer for the blockchain to sync. It'll kind of sit on this uh, splash page until the blockchain's completely synchronized and then it'll launch the application when it's ready. Uh, you can bypass that process though by hitting launch application and hitting launch application here. So that brings us into the actual wallet itself. And the first thing it takes you to is this browse tab with the Ubic Smart website over on the right hand side. So you can see that right from within the wallet, we can browse the entire website right here, which is kind of cool. See the team, uh, see the community, see upcoming events down here. So this is a really neat feature. Anytime you open up the wallet, you can catch up on the latest news. So over here, we'll see now this main account. This is the one that it just created when I put in that password two times. But what I'm here to show you guys is how to import this wallet file right here. So again, it's a super simple process. You'll go up here, click on accounts, click on import accounts, and then it'll give us this really awesome pop up with this drop wallet file uh, drop region right here. Just grab the file from wherever you've got it and bring it over here until you see that uh, little contextual cue that it kind of embosses that uh, that whole drop location. And then just drop it right there. It'll import. Give it just a moment. And if we go here, now we see a second account here. And this ends in 1170F9. And if you've watched my other videos, you'll know that there's a trick to these JSON wallet files that the end of it should always be the account. And we can see here 1170F9 is in fact our wallet address or our account uh, name. I will point out that you'll see this from time to time in various different services. The capitalization on the accounts won't always be consistent. So like here, we've got the F capitalized, um, but over here in the file name, the F is not capitalized. And I think if we were to open this up, uh, the F is not capitalized here. It's nothing to worry about. It's not like Bitcoin addresses where the capitalization actually makes it a different address. That part's not really looked at when uh, it goes to, to use the address. So if you see that from time to time where the capitalization doesn't always line up, it's not really anything to be concerned with. It's just kind of the way that the uh, Ethereum forks work. So that's all I wanted to show you in this one, just a real quick import tutorial. In the next one, we'll probably get into sending some funds and stuff like that, and it'll be a little bit more fun. All right, guys, if you have any questions on this, please uh, shoot me a comment, or uh, if you have any feedback, let me know in the comments, and uh, take it easy.